After finishing all measurements, I found an important operating principle. When the 12 volt line reaches the IC40048, the IC sends a control signal to the G gate of the 5 volt MOSFET. This signal controls the output voltage of the MOSFET. Now I will check which pin of the IC creates this signal. The signal travels through a resistor to the MOSFET gate. This resistor is used to limit the current. So we start measuring from the opposite side of the resistor and follow the trace back to the IC. Here it is. The signal comes from pin 14 of the IC. Next, we will check the 5 volt output line to see where it goes on the board. The 5 volt line does not go directly to the MCU. It powers the driver ICs and it also supplies power back to the IC40048. From my analysis, this 5 volt line acts like an enable signal for the IC40048. When this IC is enabled, it will create other power rails for the MCU. Now, let me describe the structure of the 5 volt regulator circuit. The 12 volt line from the main relay goes to the C pin of the transistor, or the D drain pin of the MOSFET. In the drawing, it was marked incorrectly, so please note the correction. The S source pin of the MOSFET is the output. This is where the 5 volt line comes out.
the G gate pin receives the control signal from pin 14 of the IC. When I measured the gate voltage, it was close to 10 volts. Normally, this means the output at the source pin should be close to that value. But in our circuit, the source pin stays at a stable 5 volts. This confirms that the circuit uses a 5 volt Zener diode to clamp and stabilize the output. Now, from this 5 volt regulator circuit, we can identify another important operating principle. Let's save this voltage point on our mainboard image. Let me measure it again to make sure the value is correct. It is about 9.8 volts. We also need to save the position of the 5 volt line. For easier understanding, we will call this line the 5 volt power on signal. Now we will reconnect the 5 volt line and continue checking all other voltages that appear when the ECU is fully powered on. Here I can see two voltage levels, 1.5 volts and 3.3 volts. From my analysis, these two voltages are created to supply power for the MCU. I will check the traces leading to the MCU pins to confirm this.
Yes, that is correct. These are the power lines that supply the MCU during operation. Let's save these voltage points on the image as well. I will label them as 1.5 volts MCU and 3.3 volts MCU so we can remember them easily. Please also try to measure as many voltage points as possible. These measurements will be very useful as reference data for future repair work. In this video, I only focus on the power circuit and the conditions required for the ECU to start up. So this amount of information is enough for now. And here is the image with all the voltage points that we measured and recorded. I have already saved every marked point directly on the picture. Now let's review everything and summarize the full power-up process so it becomes easier to understand. When we apply the IG power, this power line goes through a resistor network to limit the current, and then it arrives at pin number 19 of the IC40048. At this moment, the IC starts working and it outputs a ground signal to activate the main relay. This output signal comes from pin number 20 of the IC, and it goes out to pin number 30 of the ECU. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that our ECU does not send the signal to close the main relay. I will disconnect the main relay control wire to demonstrate this. Right now, you can imagine that the ECU is not operating at all, and there is no control signal for the main relay. Based on the circuit analysis we learned earlier, can you guess where we should start checking? Of course, according to the principle, we always check the earlier power conditions first. And the very first one is the IG power line. You need to measure the IG voltage at pin 19 of the power IC. After confirming IG power is present, we move to the next step, checking the relay control signal. If IG power is already present, but the main relay does not activate, then the relay control line coming out from the IC must have a problem. If you measure directly at the IC pin and still see no output signal, you can assume that this IC is faulty. Now, let's, let's analyze what happens when the relay control signal is present and the main relay does close. When the main relay closes, the IC now receives all required power conditions, the IG voltage and the main supply voltage. At this moment, the IC sends a control voltage through pin 14, which goes to the G gate of the MOSFET. This signal makes the MOSFET conduct, producing an output voltage at the S source pin. This voltage is then regulated and stabilized at 5 volts. This 5 volt line is also supplied back to the IC as a power on command, allowing the IC to become fully active. 
Once fully active, the IC generates the 1.5 volt and 3.3 volt power rails for the MCU and other systems on the ECU. Based on this operating principle, in many cases, when we power the ECU and the main relay clicks but does not stay engaged because the MCU has not started yet, we can suspect that this 5 volt power online is missing. And if the ECU does not operate at all, just like when there is no main relay signal, we must check the very first requirement, the uh, IG power line. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. I have just shown you the correct and proper way to trace and analyze the power supply circuit inside an automotive ECU. Up to this day, most ECUs on vehicles do not come with electrical schematics, and many of the ICs inside the ECU do not even have available data sheets. Because of that, troubleshooting and repairing an ECU can be extremely difficult. That is why this method is still the most effective way to study and understand ECU circuits. But of course, this method requires us to analyze an ECU that is working perfectly. Only then can we record accurate and reliable measurement data. With this method, you can apply the same process to almost any ECU model. If you master this approach, your study and repair work will become much easier. In today's video, I guided you through the power supply principle of the ECU type 17.9.XX. I am confident that after watching and understanding this video, you will know exactly how to check any EECU of this series whenever it has a fault related to the power on circuit. I will continue to analyze other systems inside this ECU series so you can repair them and work with them more effectively. If you find this video helpful, please leave me a positive comment and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I will keep working hard to produce even better content for you. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next video.